here is regarding uh, plate tectonics. Was it gradual or was it at a high speed? Uh, plate tectonics is continental drift, how the continents have moved around on the face of the earth. Creation scientists and evolution scientists both believe in continental drift and that believe that it have used the same mechanisms. The creation model, um, another uh, prize-winning scientist, John Bumgardner, uh, the creation model provides uh, geophysics science that is solid and real. Um, John Bumgardner has created the world's foremost computer simulation of continental drift and it's called the Terra program. The program can be run through the simulation one of two ways, with the flood of Noah or without the flood of Noah. And its inventor, Dr. Bumgarner, believes with the flood of Noah is the correct way. With the flood of Noah, catastrophic plate tectonics and runaway subduction are a part of his theory which provide that the continents could have moved at speeds of about 15 miles per hour, not centimeters per century like the uh, speed with which your fingernails can grow, but rather uh, 15 miles an hour. Given five months while the waters prevailed upon the earth, the continents could have shifted around and done all the shifting that evolutionists believe they could have done, but it could have been accomplished under the waters of Noah's flood. The only safe place would have been floating two miles above it, above two miles of water on Noah's Ark, while all of that tectonic activity was going on. So yes, plate tectonics is an integral part of the creation model, too. And I, li I like to teach with visual examples. Um, Mount Everest, it has seashells on top of it, 28,000 feet above sea level. The Rocky Mountains, the Himalaya Mountains, they did not exist during or before the flood. They had to have come from somewhere. Now, both creationists and evolutionists both acknowledge the mountain chains of the Earth had to be some of the later features to have developed in the Earth's history. They simply get the time frame wrong because they deny that there's been a worldwide flood. Now, as Dr. Jackson said, one of the world's leading experts on the movement of the plates of this Earth has shown, using computer modeling, that once those plates begin moving, they thin out the material underneath and they would move very, very rapidly. But, he, but here's an example. To create the Himalaya Mountains, India, in essence, had to slide along in, with an enormous plate of mass and slam into the Asia continental plate, buckling up those layers of rocks that have been laid down underwater to form the Himalaya Mountains. Now imagine two freight trains coming together, two huge continental plates. And imagine they only move together a thousandth of an inch per year. And the next year, they come in a thousandth of an inch closer and closer and closer. And finally, over an entire year-long period, those two plates, those two trains, bump together. Are those trains going to buckle up in a huge, enormous train wreck, shoving themselves high up into the air? No. Think about it visually. They're just going to come to a stop. But now imagine those enormously massive trains moving together very rapidly and running into each other. It's called a train wreck. They would buckle up in enormous distances up into the air and fold and bend the sediment, which, by the way, if it was millions and hundreds of millions of years old, would fracture and break. But most of the mountain chains contain sediment that's gently folded and bent as if soft sediment and mud had been bent while it was still soft and recently underwater. So the data of what the rocks look like, the data of what the mountains look like, they all point to a rapid building up of the mountain chains. It fits a biblical creation model. It contradicts this enormously age-old model of where they came from.